After an insane amount of testing, I'm finally ready and excited to share with you my full and 100% honest review of the all new 12th gen HP Omen 45L. Now I've already created a fun, more entertaining unboxing video of this beast, but this video is the serious important one that you need to pay close attention to. We maxed this computer out with an i9 12900K liquid cooled processor, the super powerful Nvidia GeForce RTX 3090 GPU, and 32 gigabytes of HyperX DDR4 RAM. Now we've run all the most important benchmarks to give you the most relevant information to help you decide if spending thousands of dollars on this machine makes sense for your budget. Budget. If you watch this entire video, you will know if this machine is right for you or not. Whether you're using it for gaming or creative applications or just overall productivity, we've pushed this machine to its max to show you what it's really capable of. I honestly say a lot of good things about this computer in the beginning, but please don't be too hasty and purchase this machine right away until you've weighed both the good and the bad that I talk about later in this video. I'll be giving you my take on the design and build quality, the internals, a look at the thermals, fan noise, benchmarks, and overall ease of use. I'm also gonna be showing you a budget-friendly configuration that I recommend for those of you that understandably can't afford this one. Now, if you have any questions after watching this entire video, just shoot me a comment as I usually respond to most of them. But if you're publicly subscribed, not only do I guarantee a personal response, but your comment gets replied to first. Now, price-wise, this machine starts at $1,900, but the maxed out configuration that we got costs $3,700. This is about $300 less than the closest equivalent equivalent Alienware Aurora R13, $600 less than a similar iBuyPower 12th gen PC, and $700 cheaper than the closest 12th gen Corsair machine. Now before you get all excited about that price, there's a few key reasons for this that we're going to talk about here in a sec. I really think that a 3090 with an i9 CPU is a little bit overkill and not that necessary for gaming. I think it's going to be just a little bit more noticeable when you're using it for creative applications. <sighs> When you're the dad of a toddler, sometimes recording just isn't as easy as you think it might be. Those were happy screams, by the way. So as I was saying, with a 3090 and an i9 CPU, it's gonna be more useful and more noticeable with 4K content and 3D rendering. So honestly, the sweet spot for me, the most noticeable cost to performance benefit ratio would be the RTX 3080 GPU with an i7 CPU. That's gonna run you $1,000 less than what we spent on this machine. And that's gonna be a lot more in line with what most people can actually afford. So the design and build quality. HP has really stepped up their game when it comes to design and engineering on this machine. At 50 pounds and 8 inches by 18.5 inches by 21.85 inches. This case is a bit larger than last year. And now it has this very creative, very innovative cryo chamber on the top. This new cooling system is dedicated to our new 12th gen CPU. With its liquid cooling, heat is transferred up through these tubes up into this 240 millimeter radiator at the top, which is then cooled by fresh air from outside of the case. This is pretty cool, literally. Considering most cooling systems suffer from the fact that they're trying to cool the CPU with preheated air from other components, especially the GPU, from within the case. Due to this new technology, the Omen 45L does not have this problem. Aside from the engineering, the aesthetic side of design is also very well done. Just beautiful animated RGB on the front fans, an easily removable tempered glass panel on the front, and even this front grille is just held on by magnets, and the top panel pops out very easily as well. Actually, every panel on this machine is incredibly easy to remove. On the front tempered glass, panel, you just need to press this button right here at the top and it just pops right out. Removing the back panel is just as easy as the front tempered glass panel. You just press that button and it pops right out. You can see right here we've got two more bays for two and a half inch SSD storage. So definitely room for storage upgrading. Now taking a closer look at the other internals, you can see we've got our Western Digital PCIe Gen 4 X4 SSD drive, our HyperX DDR4 RAM at 3733 megahertz, both with RGB heat sinks, and down below our massive and extremely powerful NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 GPU. Then at the bottom, we've got our 800 watt 80 plus gold certified ATX power supply. For the ports on the back, we've got a microphone, audio out, and audio in port, two USB ports, and an RJ 
Ethernet jack, a USB-C and a USB-A super speed 5 gigabits per second port, and beneath that an even faster USB-C and USB-A 10 gigabits per second port. And then on the back of our 3090 graphics card, we've got one HDMI 2.1 port and three display ports. On the top, we have a headphone and microphone combo jack, a dedicated microphone jack, two super speed 5 gigabits per second USB-A ports with the ability to charge devices even when the computer is in sleep mode, and two more regular USB-A ports. So with that new cryo chamber, did it actually help improve thermals? When it came to GPU temperatures, this 3090 was pretty much neck and neck with the competition in the mid 70s. But when it came to the CPU temperatures, this is where we started to see some larger differences. Significantly cooler temperatures on six of these eight games compared to Alienware. And Corsair, I actually expected it to be lower considering it only had an i7 CPU. That's the coolest 12th gen CPU that I've seen so far this year. And when it came to the fan noise, I'd say I was pretty impressed. Pretty quiet compared to the competition. In quiet mode, they were pretty silent at only 41 decibels. And only two decibels more when gaming with a computer in performance mode. But then with the fans at absolute full speed mode, they were a little bit louder at 68 decibels. This machine never actually had to push its fans to full speed when in gaming mode though. The only time that it got a little noisy was during my crypto mining tests. As you can see, it beat the R13, but again, the less powerful, so less hot Corsair was understandably the quietest of the three. Now the part that matters the most, performance and gaming benchmarks. For Geekbench 5, we got a single core score of 1878 and a multi-core score of 14451. That's just a hair lower than the others on the single core score, but quite a bit lower on the multi-core score. But stay with me because things get interesting when it comes to actual gameplay. You can see here that the Corsair isn't fairly matched with only an i7 and a 3070 Ti GPU, but I included it anyway because it actually held its ground pretty well. I've included links below to that computer as well as the review that I did for it. For Cinebench R23, it came in at 23,812 on the multi-core and 1809 on the single core. You can see here that the Alienware Aurora R13 actually came in on top when it came to these render tests. But for 3D Mark, which is a better representation of gameability, if that's even a word, we got an overall score of 18,417, a graphics score of 18,908, and a CPU score of 16,058. The HP Omen 45L is the clear winner here in every category except for that CPU, which we'll get to here in a sec. When it came to actual gameplay in HD, it had pretty decent numbers. It had the highest FPS on three of these games that we tested on the first 12th gen desktops that we were able to get our hands on so far. And then moving up to 1440p and 4K, we started to see the HP Omen flex its muscles a little bit more, getting the highest FPS on all of these games, except for, surprisingly, the two games that had the highest FPS on our 1080p tests. All right, so how about creative benchmarks? Our Pugin benchmark score for Premiere was 1002, for After Effects, 1111, and for DaVinci, we got a 1630. The R13 actually slightly beat this computer for every one of those programs in each of these tests. And the lower spec Corsair machine even beat it for Premiere as well. For actual export times, while this machine was fast, the other two were faster at rendering video edits in Premiere, while this machine took less time exporting with DaVinci. And almost identical export times in After Effects to the Alienware machine. And again, pretty impressed that the lower spec Corsair machine was just as fast as the Alienware machine in Adobe Premiere, and actually the fastest one in After Effects. And when it came to web browsing, Browser Bench Speedometer, which measures the speed of web applications also had a pretty solid score of 253. The hard drive speeds were pretty impressive as well. 6900 read, 5200 write. That's pretty fast. Needless to say, copying files can be done at lightning speed. Crypto mining was also very efficient with this computer giving us similar hash rates to what we got with the R13 at 120 mega hashes per second. Now, when it came to overclocking, the overclocking tools gave the appearance of giving us a lot of control and the ability to push this computer further. But after a lot of tests, I discovered that they really don't help that much at all, unfortunately. Regardless of those tools, HP is still holding the CPU back from what it's really capable of. Now, there's quite a few options in the BIOS as well, but the only part that you'll probably care about is this advanced section right here. This is where you can push the RAM frequency speeds past that 3200 megahertz that it weirdly caps you at, or if you're feeling extra dangerous, you can push it even further if you want to. So, getting into the software. Taking a look at the Omen Gaming Hub in the System Vitals tab, you can see our 
our CPU, GPU, and memory usage. And then Network Booster for setting which programs or games get priority over the internet bandwidth. Pretty basic settings in the lighting tab, but if you go into the Omen Light Studio, much more interactive settings in here. If you've got any other devices, you can put them in here and also get all the animation to sync up with each other. Now this performance tab right here is probably what you're gonna be using the most. Here you can actually boost your performance for gaming as well as tune your fans to cool the computer better. And then we've got a booster and cleaner tab, which we most likely really won't need to use until our computer starts showing signs of slowing down when it gets a lot older. Now the second most important app that you're gonna to wanna to know about is the HP Support Assistant. This tab right here makes it super easy to keep up to date with all of the latest software and driver updates. Under fixes and diagnostics, you've got a plethora of troubleshooting tools to help you assess any issues you may be having and determine the best course of action going forward. Now my overall top reasons you should not get this computer. Number one is no DDR5. Now this isn't a huge deal compared to the competition right now, but as we start to see faster and faster DDR5 sticks becoming available, this PC is gonna be missing out on that extra performance boost. My next one is no PCIe 5.0. Without this, this machine is most likely not gonna be ready for the next generation of GPUs. So upgradability is not what I think it should be for a computer released in 2022. My next one is the locked motherboard and BIOS. When it came to overclocking this computer, HP is holding this machine back from what it's really capable of. My overall top reasons to get this computer, number one is the thermals. These CPU thermals were very impressive considering it's the latest and greatest i9 processor. It's a really impressive, really genius design, and I'm not quite sure why other cases haven't implemented something like this. My next pro is performance. It was very interesting to see that with actual gameplay, this machine underperformed when it came to HD, but as soon as we crank that resolution up to 1440p or 4k, it actually shined above the competition. When it was challenged, it didn't let us down. Definitely a fast machine for sure. And if they just didn't power limit that CPU, there's no telling how fast this machine would be. My last pro is the fan noise. It's not that these fans are super quiet or anything, but that frequency, the frequency was lower pitched and clean, so it sounded less noticeable and less annoying than many other gaming desktops. So do I actually recommend this machine? Well, right now it costs less than the competition, but it's just slightly less future-proof without DDR5 and no PCIe 5.0. That being said, if you do buy this machine, you're not gonna have to upgrade for quite some time. And if you max it out with a 3090, you're really not gonna miss the fact that upgrading to a 40 series GPU is probably not gonna be feasible with this motherboard. If you've got the money and you've already been waiting for six months or more to get a performance machine, I would say go ahead and get it. But if you just started shopping and can wait till September when the 40 series GPU should be released, then I would wait. And if you do decide to purchase this, if you could please use my affiliate links in the description below as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. Or if you just wanna support this channel and help keep it growing, please consider to become a channel member by clicking on the join button below. Guys, remember every Friday I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to keep an eye out for that, as well as keeping up to date with all of my latest gaming PCs. And the winner of the Amazon.com e-gift card giveaway for this week is... My old sus. If you want to check out my latest gaming PC reviews, then click up here. And if you still haven't subscribed, then click on this button right here. Thanks for watching.